message we will start is from here. We buy barrels in from America. They all come in like that, they come in intact. What we do is select them. We'll look around. Any defects in them, like the bad bungs there, we'll take out. Right? So these barrels here come to Heaven Hill. Normally, there's 209 will come in in a container. About 60 or 70 will need repair. That's our job in here is to repair them. But repairing them, what we normally do is we bring in 10 barrels and bring one in for spare parts. The spare parts is like here and here. As you will notice the difference on them is the length of the barrels, the length of that wire. <laughs> what we would normally do is chop that down. Back here. <laughs> it's that wire that keeps falling out. Don't you? Famous last words. Right. As I'm saying about the difference in the staves, you can see the crows at the end has got to match the crows there. So what they would do is they would take that off and re close it to match. You could have one broken stave, you could have ten broken staves in it. Our job is to put the tent back in and make it tight. Right. right, that's good staves. Barry here, he's teaching one of the apprentices how to repair the barrels. This one here's already had staves taken out. Did you see he's put those in there and re closed it to match or near enough? See? So he's put in. That amount of broken wood. If the barrels come in and they're slightly dry, we can put them onto the steam for a couple of minutes. It'll soften the wood up, and it also makes it tighter and easier to work with. The only thing is you need to let them cool down before you fill them. Right? The bad staves, they all come out, all go into a pallet here. We send them away to the fish industry, they chip them down, smoke the fish with them. So we got a wee bit of money back on that. We try and salvage most of the stuff that we can get. Ends we reuse again, staves we use again, and we use the hooks again. Try and use as much as it would possible so that there's less wastage. Now, the steam pan is in here. This one here. What we would normally do with it is put it on there for a couple of minutes, as I said, it'll make it softer there, easier to work off the wood. I'll put it in once Barry comes out. Right, this is one that's already come off, okay? You will notice two things about it, the steam, another thing is the smell. The aroma for the smell off it, smell it and you'll smell the whiskey comes straight back out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. It works two ways. It makes the barrel tight, makes it softer. The barrel gets rehydrated in there. It gets dehydrated down at the recharging process. That makes it softer, easier for the barrel to work. You want to do it? Well, just leave it. Look at that. A crumb knife and you'll crumb that wee part off there. As I say, the crows are slightly out, so we'll put a wee crows across that part. Yeah, that'll stop the wire from falling off. <laughs> I've just done a runner. I'll make sure they're on the bench. And what you've got is the line matches the rest of the barrel. If that there isn't done, your barrel will leak. 
That's got to be even right round it for the end to sit in. If it doesn't, so it's well done. What he's got is the original end that can back out the barrel. He's put a number on it, number eight. I'll match up the cask he's doing. He'll pop the end in, put a bit of flag on it, and that's it. Then we'll let it cool down a bit. Sound. Just about that. <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy. No. A bit of flag that goes round it. The flag just has to go round basically. The part that he's just recrows, just to double, make it tighter a bit. Just hang of yours is a pain in the It takes approximately 15 minutes to repair a barrel. From that state there, to repairing it, to get it tight, 15 minutes. They do 22 barrels each per day. On a Friday they do 17, so it's 105 barrels each, Cooper does. There are five on the bench and there are two apprentices. And there's myself and Tom that goes down the bottom, testing them. And that's all that. All it needs is a wee top there, top and plane. And that brings it back to the original way the barrel stave was. So that's all they have to do with that barrel. It just has to get dumped. So we'll leave it. Right, we'll move on. All the tools that's working on the bench, that's the tools, everyone's got specific things that we do. We don't need a lot of machinery, we've only got two machines that we use as a saw or a planer. The rest is done by hand. Right? So, they're pretty expensive, the crows there. This is the thing that puts the line round the edge. That costs £400 oh, really? for the buy new. So we have to try and kind of look after them. Who's making them? Uh, they, they get made by people called Mackenzie and Midlothian. Right. They make the tools, most of the tools, but that's the only people that we know nowadays that make them. Right, so we'll go away, we've done that. These machines here is for punching out the rivets, if we can get A hoop with two rivets that's on it. In the olden days, we put it over an anvil, put a punch on it, and punch it out by hand. The health and safety said it's a risk, so we do it with machines now. It makes it a bit easier. But you notice it leaves a small lip on the edge yet? This machine flattens it. We now have the smooth parts. We move it over two holes and we punch the hole back in. There's a rivet goes right through through the hole. And it should come out re-riveted. Same in that one. That's what I'll get. Two rivets being moved back across again. Right, don't need that. When they bring the barrel in from America, 
they'll lift the six hoops on them, they'll lift the bull shoots up to a third and they'll leave a quarter hoop a thumb distance apart. The reason why they lift them up, if they bring the barrel back out and it's a bit dry, we can drive the hoops without having to go through that and take them all in again. You can see, we'll go down, we'll move to another one. Play now. When you take a stave out of a barrel, some of them will be rough on the edge, so we would use a planer like that to take it off. And what you're going to get is a nice smooth joint. So if you get two smooth joints, it ain't going to leak. That's quite important for the get it. Yeah. Right? We we'll move down. Boring machine. Right, I've got a barrel down, I'll show you that. automatically all you do is center the barrel in press the button and leave it The result in it, we've got a perfect round hole. The reason we bore them on the end is we put six barrels on a pallet and we store them on top of each other. If the barrel was getting into a racking system, that wouldn't get bored. We would just bore it and keep a normal bore in there. But normally we would take that bung stave out and bore it on that end. When, when did you switch to pallet? A what? When did you switch to the palleted uh, storage? We did both. Yeah. Both different warehouses have the different some have got a racking system, other ones put them back up. It's basically only for storage. It doesn't really affect much of the quality when it goes back in it. If it does anything, it can slow the process down slowly because the air isn't circulating as much through them. But the same effect, if it's too high near the top, the sun hits the roof, you're going to evaporate more spirit off it. And if it's cooler at the bottom, it'll take a wee bit longer to mature. It seems to work both ways. Right, we can leave that. Andy's away. Circular saw. That's basically just for cutting out the ends off it. So we we'll leave that down. Yeah, the other one, a bit obsolete, the blade wouldn't stop. Right. I'll get you one, I'll do one to the start and bring it back down. Did you notice with that barrel, the bung stave's been taken out in the centre of it and the hoops have been lifted up. The reason is, when you put the end back in, it'll be the board on the top and drive the hoops down. <laughs> Sorry, Elliot. Right. The staves against the wall. These are all the parts that we'll use for spare parts. If we got a Heaven Hill barrel in, we'll use a Heaven Hill. If we got a Jim Beam barrel, we'll use Jim Beam staves. Bourbon has to go with bourbon. We'll recharge barrels, it doesn't matter. We we'll use any stave at all. Right. The Heaven Hill. And that's a Jim Beam. You see the mark on it? Jim Beam, it's a slight different chime on it. Heaven Hill's got a heavier chime. That's the way you can tell the difference on them. They'll have one like. Your Heaven Hill's going to come with a chime like that. It's going to be heavy. And your Jim Beam's going to come with a chime small. If you put two of them together, you'll notice there's quite a difference. Every cooperage has got their own wee trademark what they do with them. Some change in rivets, 
make them wide apart, some make them wide, some put their initials on them. But you can put that heavy one, wouldn't do. Did you notice when they come back in also, when they come in from America, they're already recharged? So that one's got a slight alligator effect on it, a pretty heavy char that they've put on it. The things that we look for is that brown line running down the centre. When they come in from first fill bourbons, it should be perfect like that, halfway. Once the line starts to come up near the edge, then it's not going to mature as much. It can't breathe, it'll take longer. The colour will start to dis That's why we take a de-char off. de it allows it to breathe back from the outside and it brings the flavour back out of the wood. Right, leave that down to this. If you smell that, what you're going to get is a Pedro Eminem sherry that's on it. There are two types of sherry casks we use, Oloroso and Pedro Eminem. That's the only two that we use. We bring them in, basically if it's to marry the whiskey, we'll have a 12 year old malt, they'll put it into a cask with a sherry finish like that and leave it for another year to it matures so you get a flavour of the sherry that's on it. We could also do it with the butts or a sherry hogshead. You'll see the difference in the height on them. So, They also use wine staves. As you notice, the wine staves, you've got wee crystallisations starting to form on it. It's potassium tartrate, is what it is. It's odourless, it's tasteless. But we still don't like it to go in the barrel, so when we get it, we burn it off and rechar it. Two different kinds of wood. Bourbon oak, it comes in, you've got a different slight grain. The grain goes long ways with wee spaces in between them. This one, the grain runs all the way. It's a lot more weaker with carity, it can break, whereas the bourbon barrels bulletproof, it's tough. So prefer to use the bourbon barrels. Right. Decharring process. Right. This barrel, 2002, when it was first used through there, so what we're going to do is take the charcoal back off it, rechar it, and put it back into the process again. Charcoal comes off, we use a wire brush. The wire brush is fitted to the back of that machine in there. The brush goes down like that to the bottom, comes back up, the barrel will rotate and the brush rotates. The thing about the brush is, it's got to be made of stainless steel. If you use iron on it, it's ferrous metal, or rust, it'll turn the whiskey black. So it has to be stainless steel, and you can feel it, it's pretty firm. Stainless steel is solid metal. Yeah. Right. Two things that comes off of that. This tape here, First fill bourbon stave. That's the way they come in from America. As I said, you can see the brown line again. That's perfect. When you rechar it, like this one, an older one, you'll notice the difference in the thickness. When you dechar it, it's going to get thinner. So you've got one more process, it'll go like that, then we'll go to a different. But that was an old waterlogged stave, it's been recharred, and it's back brand new again. That one's like say, a heavy char, with the alligator effect. That'll take approximately five minutes to burn that. Most of the barrels in here are all medium chars. It takes about three minutes, between two and a half to three minutes to rechar it. Right, let's we'll see if we can do a rechar on it. Sitting at the back here is a wire brush. This will start spinning, that will clamp in, but it's two safety locks, so we have to do it through a window. Nobody go, I'll get out of your way. First of all, we'll clamp it, then we'll start it spinning. 
and we'll start the brush on. Then we'll bring that down. And extend the brush out. The brush feels a bit tight. So what it's done is take all the charcoal off it, it's gave it a nice even coat right round about it. So whenever you put the charcoal back on, it's going to be even coated, it's not going to be thin and thick, it's all going to be the same way. Then still bin it when we rechar it, and at the bottom you can see the small distance. Well the reason why they've got a small distance on it, when the lens is in there to burn it, it starts burning from about 3 or 4 inches from the bottom and it works its way up to the top. So by the time it comes to the top, it'll be evenly coated. Right, I'll show you it burning, you maybe like that. come out about two feet and then we'll feed the lens in and it'll start burning it. Right? Start the flame, sorry for standing in your stool. Take a couple of minutes, two or three minutes. The blue flame that's coming off it is the alcohol that's still in the wood. What we have to wait on is it burning the alcohol off and the flame will change to a bright orange and we'll let it burn for a couple of minutes. You'll also hear it crackling and it'll be able to burn on its own then. seldom breaks down. It's capable of putting a hundred barrels a day down the line. Now oh, it's the wood. 2000, 2002 it was. Bring that 
bar y se torna y se en el zoom. That shoe is just burning on itself. So what we'll do is we'll stop the process before it goes any further. We'll douse it out with some water. And we'll wait the smoke going away and then take the barrel back off. Okay, shoes. Right, I'll have to ask you to step back over there but I'm going to bring this barrel back off and you can stay there if you want All right. Just when you eject the barrel and turn the barrel over the line Right What you're going to get is a slight bonfire smell off it and it's sweet. The sweetness on it goes back out. Whenever you put the spirit in it, then it draws the flavour back out. It just doesn't happen overnight. Three months maybe before it will start pulling it back out. Again, we'll just put another reed back round it. machine down here that puts the hoops down, saves if it's driving them down by hand. If you come down I'll show you it working. As I was saying, the bung stave has been taken out, the hoops have all been lifted back up. All we have to do is turn the bar over and test it. water, half a pint of cold water, because the barrel's warm inside it, it'll look like steam coming out, but it's just cold water. Sorry. 
Same again, this time we'll put compressed air in, with six pounds per square inch. It'll mix with water. If the barrel leaks, it'll come out as bubbles. What we're looking for is any bubbles, any joints that are leaking on it. That's fine. Looks good. It's okay. And that's okay. If the barrel was leaking, this is what you would see. Mm. You see those bubbles come around the crows or out the joints. But it's sound. Just watch your eyes a wee minute. Okay. <laughs> the paint is only emulsion paint. There's no additives, no lead bases or nothing. It's just straight emulsion cast paint. In the olden days, they used to have paint on it and they were lead based. They done, it was a no -no. they done away with it, so it's just emulsion paint. The reason the paint is on it, if they two tickets fall off, you can just look over, see the ones are pink, you know they've been recharged. It's only the ones that go through the recharging process to get painted. So it's only for to pick them out basically. Right, I'll get rid of that. There's Frank giving away all our profits again. <laughs> Right, the bung goes in it like that, once it's filled, once it's filled at the filling station, they fill it up, bung it up, and they put a cross on it, just to tell you it's the first fill. After they empty it, they'll do the same again, if a barrel looks okay and it's not leaking, after a third time, automatically it comes right back down there. We'll have a look at it, if it's repairable, we'll repair it, put it back through the process, if not, knock it down. Minimum grain, three years, so this cask, Three years, three years, three years, nine years, plus the timeline about ten years. So it'll be ten years before that ever comes back out again. Which is quite good considering it's probably about 25 year old. So in its lifetime it's probably had a bourbon fill, two malt fills, three grain fills, and now it's come back in for three grain fills. So it's quite good. As long as you keep on top of it and the get the cast done pretty quick, they've got good quality. To get the quality, you have to get them filled quick again. You don't want them lying out here for two or three years and then they turn sour and all sorts. Get them in, get them filled, keep the quality good. Keeps the spirit good. <laughs>